Hey everybody, it's Irene with Brainstorm Makers. And today, we're gonna to make more progress in the greenhouse. This progress today is gonna to be a bit on the brutal side. Henry and I have been chatting about this for several days and we keep sort of vacillating back and forth a little bit, but the decision has been made. I may not finish it all today, but I'm gonna make progress. First of all, I would like to point out the tomatoes over here. They are loving their new homes. They're greening up nicely. I think the one has grown at least two or three inches. <laughs> and we're really hoping that these are going to produce something. But on to the brutal part. I'm gonna start ripping out a bunch of the hydroponic tomatoes. The quality of the tomatoes that we're getting is just not good. We do have two plants over there that are producing really well. And I'm gonna keep those going. The rest of them, I'm going to pull the green uh, the green uh, fruit and obviously any partially ripe fruit and we'll see what we can salvage out of that the rest is going in the compost Okay, 
progress. Now that may have seemed a little bit draconian, but the problem we're having is that the quality of the fruits that are coming off of those tomatoes is very poor. They have no gooey, delicious stuff inside at all. They're dry. Now when you make them up in the sauce, they're okay. And they, they taste relatively good and stuff like that, but the production that we're getting out of them is just not worth the amount of work that it takes to keep them going. So by cutting that all down, it means that when Henry's done with the solar refit, we can start really moving this stuff around. And it'll be easy enough to move just those two plants that are left there. We have two plants left. One is a Gardener's Delight, which is a cherry tomato. And the other one is Big Boy, which is a beefsteak style tomato. Over here we have Big Beef. Yeah, that was done. That, I don't know if I said Big Boy or Big Beef. It's Big Beef down there. There's one Big Beef here. There's another Gardener's Delight. And then there's Granadero, which is a paste tomato. It's a San Marzano type. And this is going to allow us to just really make progress in here. We really want to get this thing stabilized as much as possible before it gets really cold. Right now, it's about a third of the way through October and we're way warmer than usual and the current forecast is supposed to be way warmer than usual for a while but you know something could happen tomorrow and some new storm comes from nowhere so we want to be as ready as we can we're pleased with the way the cucumbers are behaving the boy <laughs> Oh, he's very excited, you can tell. <laughs> so here are the tomatoes I transplanted the other day. They've had a super light fertilizing, just a teeny bit of uh, Epsom salts and a little bit of leftover uh, water from the deep water culture that we've decommissioned. And they are already greening up and looking so much better. As soon as they've got a little bit more foliage on them, I will uh, cut off anything that's not completely blight free. Having different problems with the watermelon and pie pumpkin. Uh, I need to do a little bit more research. It's some sort of blight, some sort of fungus, some sort of something. This pumpkin got sick like three minutes after it moved in here. It was perfectly healthy. I transplanted it and it was instantly sick. So. Uh, I need to do some research because I need to find out what the variety of yuck is that it's got. And I have uh, some sources for that. We do have two watermelons. We have one down here. And we have one over here. But it does not look like we're going to get any pumpkins. It was worth a try. You know, we it, to be honest, if we'd left them outside, the deer would have eaten them. So here's the mess. And we'll be cleaning that up. And we'll be shipping it out to the compost. Uh, the temporary compost pile. I have one right outside the door kind of here. I'm not going to reuse any of the clips or the string. It would be possible to reuse the clips by soaking them in a Clorox solution. They're so inexpensive. It's really not worth it. This is the exciting stuff. We have peas and we have kohlrabi up. The peppers are doing great. We have both California Wonder, green peppers, just a regular old bell pepper, and we have uh, Antohi frying peppers. Got some funky looking uh, pak choy over here. It's got some damage from some white fly and stuff like that, but it was still very delicious the other day. And these little guys are still setting fruit like crazy. Every single one of these flowers in here bloomed the other day. So with any luck, Every single one of those is going to be a fruit. As you can see, they're full of fruit right now. They're a little messy right now. I'm going to... I just ran the uh, irrigation briefly to make sure I didn't have any major leaks because sometimes when you move things around, you'll pop something loose. No major leaks, a couple of minor ones. I'm not going to worry about it. If this was the beginning of the season, I'd probably worry about it. This late in the season, I'm not going to. Uh, these are not very big, big beef. <laughs> 
but it is end of season. These are still really delicious. We ate a couple just the other day, and uh, you can see they're putting on more, so and they have more flowers up top. So we're going to leave them here as long as possible. I may bring those uh, two Amanda Orange in once we have the other system set up. I don't see any reason to shock them by bringing them in here for right now. And they're doing really well outside, so why change? And my silly little cabbage is looking very happy over there. He's growing nicely, so I just keep watering him and he's happy. Cucumbers looked a little bit peaked for a couple of days there, and my conclusion was they needed some fertilizer, so they're starting to really green up now. And all the new foliage on them is looking great. I will eventually trim off all the old foliage. That'll get rid of any bug eggs, any miscellaneous junk. And just, they don't need to support that much in order to produce healthy fruit. So hopefully you found that interesting. I'll see if I have some pictures, I'm sure I do, of the inside of some of that fruit. And you'll see why we decided to ditch it. We're still in conversation with the growers because they've offered me free seeds. That's great. I, I you know, not a problem. But that's not the point. I want to truly understand what went wrong. Is it all the seeds or is it something we did or is it a virus? I mean, there's weird things that can happen. Personally, I think there were contaminated seeds in somehow. Like whoever, whoever grew them did not grow them carefully enough and it's not the right variety. It's got some sort of a mix going on there. But whatever happened, we're gonna put that behind us. We're gonna grow something different next year. I'm not that thrilled with the flavor. There are many other things that we can grow that will have a wonderful flavor, so. We'll just choose something else. So be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because there's obviously going to be a ton more going on in here, ton more going on in the solar. I've got a great little talk I want to have about plant varieties and how to switch things up in the garden, all kinds of stuff happening. So until next time, bye.